Hey there, it's Sandra, and welcome back to Misadventures in Print. Today we're going to explore some important related pre-press topics. We're going to talk about what spreads are, what printing imposition is, and what print economy means, and how signatures determine page count. Frankly, I'm pretty thrilled to talk about it all. First, let's identify three primary types of layout. There's designing flat work, like playing card decks, dungeon tiles, business cards, and postcards, basically materials that just need trimming to be considered finished. There are signatures, which are part of multi-page publications. These are printed materials that require folding to be considered complete. And there's packaging work, which are things like card deck tuck boxes. These are prints that require folding as well as special die cuts to trim the final print into specific shapes. This chapter is relevant to all of these types of work to varying degrees depending on the project. Although the specifics for each of these layout types varies, the general concepts are the same for all, but we'll mostly be talking about the first two types, flat work and signatures. Now let's get to it. Let's talk about those spreads. For flat work like playing cards, there are no spreads because there's no folding or binding required further down the production line. It just gets trimmed to complete the job. So when you're starting your layout file in your design software, you can set up your page layout as normal and you should have bleed on all four sides of the card. When you're exporting your file at the end of your project, your file should be exported as single pages with bleed, no printer's marks, no crop marks, no registration marks, no color bars. For projects that have folds in addition to trims to complete the job, like books, you'll need to set up your layout file a little differently. If you pull out any book from your bookshelf and open it, you'll notice that the first page is on the right-hand side, and the last page is on the left-hand side, and all the pages in between are facing each other. It's the same view you would see in your page layout software. So when you're starting your book layout in your design software, select facing pages and make sure your first page is a single right-hand page and know that your last page will be a single left-hand page. With facing pages applied, enter the values for the bleed space on the outside three edges of each book page leaving the gutter with no bleed. The left and right hand facing pages together in your software view are called the reader spreads. When you're exporting your file at the end of your project, make sure you're exporting your file as single pages with bleed, not two page spreads. Please note, in the past, our book specs have required a white gutter space in addition to the safety margin, but now our current automated print workflow injects that space for you in hardcover case-bound book files. Why do we need that gutter? In the binding process, the spine glue is repelled by ink, so this white space, free from any ink, makes the glue adhere more evenly to the paper. It strengthens the spine. So for that reason, please be mindful of how much content you place in the gutter to accommodate the binding. And now, just for fun, let's do a little side project to meditate on while we talk about imposition. We're going to make a dummy book. Making a dummy book is a pretty useful exercise in a lot of ways, especially at the beginning of a project, because it can help you visualize and plan the order of your page content. All you need to start is a sheet of paper, a pair of scissors, and a writing instrument of your choice. This is a sheet of paper. Doesn't look like much yet, does it? But if you fold it in half, now you have a folio. This is the most basic signature and it's made up of four pages. Each half is a leaf and each leaf is made of two pages. Signatures are basically a number of folios nested together. They can be as small as four pages or as many as 32 pages, depending on the page size and the volume of your product, the paper weight, and the printing conditions. So now, let's take this sheet and fold it in half again, and then in half again. Now, in this instance, we have what makes up a 16-page signature. It's made of four folios, or eight leaves, 
and is the most you can get out of this piece of paper at this size. If we number these pages and then open up the sheet, you can see that the page order isn't the same as the page order you would see in your layout software. While the page order in your layout software is called the reader spread, the page order of the folded book we just made is called the printer spread. You'll notice that half of the page images are upside down. This head-to-head -head and double-sided page placement on a larger press sheet is called imposition. It's often a built-in part of the automated pre-press process. Compositing software takes your single page PDF with no crop or registration marks, and it lays those pages out so the entire press sheet can be printed, folded, bound, and cut with fewer steps, but it all still ends up with the pages being in the correct reading order. This compositing process is why, for our workflow, we ask that you not submit PDFs and spreads, or with any registration marks or color bars at all. These spreads won't be placed correctly because of the additional page information, and they're unnecessary because the printer's marks on the entire sheet are all taken care of by the imposition software. Imposing multiple pages on a larger sheet of paper like this has a lot of benefits. You're trying to get as much out of the paper as you can, with the least amount of waste and spoilage, the least amount of time printing on the press, and the least amount of time spent on cutting, binding, and other finishing tasks. How does imposition make it simpler and faster? Watch this. <laughs> Signatures and imposition configurations depend on a few things. The physical size of your book or card, the number of pages or cards in the product, the kind of stitching or binding method, if any, that will be used after printing, the kind of printer being used because different printers have different paper feed sizes, and that affects how much content can be placed on the press sheet. And lastly, paper grain direction, because folds should be in the same direction as the grain for a smooth fold. Folding against the paper grain can result in paper cracking, especially for heavier weight papers. Our card printing partner handles imposition as part of their automated workflow. Their current printing equipment prints on a press sheet paper size that produces under these imposition conditions. 8 inch by 10 inch and letter are two up. 6 inch by 6 inch dungeon tiles are 4 up, tarot card sizes are 12 up, and poker and mini playing cards are 20 up. Our book printing partner requires that you submit a book with a page count divisible by 2. They also handle the imposition as part of their setup automation. Their current printing equipment uses press sheet paper sizes that produce under these imposition conditions. Books that are 6.69 inches by 9.61 inches and larger use four-page single-sheet signatures. Books that are 6.14 inches by 9.21 inches and smaller use four- or six-page single-sheet signatures. Does this mean signature counts don't matter anymore? Nope. They still matter. If you don't take your signature count into consideration, you're ignoring an aspect of print economy. You could end up with unplanned, blank pages at the end of the book, pages that are lacking any kind of content, even page numbers and footers, just completely clean sheets of paper. On the surface, they seem like extra sheets of extraneous paper, but they're actually pretty important because they structurally need to be there to meet the signature count. If your signature count isn't correct, the printer will compensate for that during the imposition process before press by adding those pages. Those blanks are materials that still need to be paid for as part of the overall print job. So you end up with blanks at the back of the book that could look like a misprint, 
all because your contents didn't square with the appropriate signature count. Optimizing your page count for content comes down to knowing how many signatures you have to work with so you can plan and make design adjustments accordingly. Remember when I said your last page had to be a single left-hand page? This is still true, and it should be included in your final planned page count. But when submitting your interior PDF, don't include it in your file. Let's say I'm printing an 8.5 by 11 coloring book. Based on the printer's signature information, I know that a signature count at this size will be divisible by 4. So the final book interior page count would be 6 signatures of 4 pages equaling 24, 7 signatures of 4 pages equaling 28, 8 signatures of 4 pages equaling 32, and so on. Therefore, I will submit a file that is 23, 27, or 31 pages because I know that the missing final page is going to be inserted by the printer with their workflow barcode. If my page content ends at page 21 and my cover is built for 22 pages, I can still submit that file at 21 pages, but I know that the printer will add the last three to make that 24 page count. Two of those pages will be blank, and the last page will have that printer's workflow barcode. The barcode slug is what gets scanned and ensures that this book interior is married to the correct cover during the automated bindery process. The final page count, when calculated with the weight of the paper, dictates how wide the spine will have to be to accommodate the book's interior block. So if you end up doing extensive editing to your content before print, and it changes your page count, you'll need to download and prep a new cover template from the cover generator with the new page count so that the spine width calculation is correct. And don't forget, your book's final page count includes anything that appears in the book interior. That includes unnumbered pages, inserted photography and art, and any front and back matter like acknowledgements, credits, appendices, and indexes.